Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will see how to set up automatic deployment of uh, Node.js REST API on AWS uh, EC2 instance. So currently I have opened my uh, project folder on v VS Code. It is currently running on my local machine. Uh, you can see uh, it is uh, started listening on port 5000 and connected to MongoDB uh, database. So here I'm using MongoDB Atlas which is a cloud database i'm uh, connecting to the database using the mongoose uh, package and uh, uh, i'm making use of uh, environment variables uh, so in dot env file i have my database connection so uh, if you go to uh, mongodb cloud.mongodb.com uh, i have already set up my database cluster uh, you simply have to uh, sign up and uh, create your uh, database cluster so i have uh, created a shared cluster with a free plan you can see you need to create your organization and inside that you need to create your project and then uh, once you are inside you need to create a database user and uh, you need to uh, allow your uh, uh, system to access like you need to configure the network access so that uh, the your server can reach out to this uh, cloud database so currently i, I have allowed uh, uh, any ip address but uh, eventually uh, you have to provide your server so you can click on uh, add ip address and then simply uh, add your current ip or you can go ahead and add your server ip okay let's go back so from the cluster you can click on the connect button and here you can uh, choose your way of up connecting so here we can choose driver application option and here i'm selecting node.js and with the latest version so you can go ahead and copy this uh, uh, connection url so this is the this is what i'm using inside uh, vs code in in this uh, environment variable okay so it is currently running on my local machine and let's see uh, some uh, testing on uh, local machine so i'm using postman here so uh, i i'm using this uh, uh, api endpoint here so let's make a call so it is a get request i'm making to api slash users as you can see i got this uh, information uh, from the database so let's uh, browse collections we can see our uh, database and the uh, collections so you can see this is the information that i am uh, getting from uh, postman okay so let's start with the setup so first of all uh, go to uh, aws uh, console so i have already logged in to my uh, aws account as a root user make sure uh, you have a uh, uh, iam permissions uh, uh, to create the ec2 instance so uh, currently i am inside my root account let's go ahead and select the uh, service so either you can go to uh, services section or uh, uh, so you can see uh, currently in my dashboard it is uh, showing so let's go to ec2 okay so from here uh, you can uh, select launch uh, ec2 instance let's choose this option okay so here we need to provide a name so let's give node.js rest api server so we have to uh, choose the uh, operating system so here i'm choosing ubuntu and uh, uh, so by default uh, the latest uh, version on ubuntu server was uh, uh, this one so i'm just using uh, selecting this default option as it is a free tier eligible so make sure you are selecting the free version otherwise you will get charged so i'm uh, going with uh, okay so let's so the key pair you have to uh, choose the existing one in if you have one so i'm just uh, creating a new pair okay so uh, uh, you can leave the key pair type as rsca so private key file format uh, here if you are mac user or linux uh, user uh, you can go ahead uh, to, uh, with the pem file if you are windows user uh, like if you are using putty client to uh, 
ssh into your uh, uh, ec2 instance then you can go ahead and download a dot ppk file so here even though i'm a windows user i am just uh, trying with the uh, temp file i will also show you how to uh, connect uh, using putty so let's go ahead and create uh, key pair okay so it is downloaded so we can uh, leave the existing uh, options and uh, we can go ahead and launch the instance so i'm just leaving the remaining information as it is so let's click on launch instance okay so let's go to uh, the instance details page so let's wait for a couple of minutes uh, so it is currently in pending state so in the meantime let's go ahead and uh, set up our uh, github repository so let's go ahead and create one So I'm just uh, going with the public, uh, uh, so it is uh, up to you, uh, so let's create the repo. Alright, so let me open a terminal. Okay, so let's start with the initializing uh, uh, git on uh, local project. Okay. As you can see, like uh, in my uh, VS Code, you can see uh, I'm using uh, git ignore file. Uh, so I'm uh, uh, ignoring node modules as well as a uh, .env file. So let's uh, commit and push to the uh, remote repository. So we need to add to the staging area. okay so we have a uh, committed uh, so we need to add remote origin uh, so let's we can make use of the remaining commands from here so i'm just copying these commands okay so we have added our remote origin and we have set up our branch main branch and we are going to push our main branch to remote Okay, let's verify. All right, so code has been pushed. So let's verify the C2 instance. Okay, it is uh, up and running. Let's click on this. So now we can see uh, the details of this uh, server. Uh, so it is providing uh, some details like uh, IP address, the DNS address and uh, remaining information. So here, uh, uh, we need to add a few uh, uh, security groups so we need to go to security options here so uh, currently default it has created one so let's click on this one so you, you can see uh, under inbound rules uh, by default there is one uh, ssh rule that is already created so here you we need to click on edit inbound rules uh, we need to add a new rule so we need a http uh, rule because uh, we will be making api calls uh, uh, on the internet right so we need http uh, rule so by default it uh, uh, takes 80 as a default port number so here uh, source should be uh, anywhere so uh, let's let's choose this option okay so you can see anywhere ipv4 option is selected okay so let's save the rule let's go back to our dashboard all right uh, so now we need to connect to our ec2 instance right so uh, once you check mark this uh, you will able to click on this connect button you can see uh, uh, it has selected the ssh client option so you can connect from various uh, options uh, uh, like i'm using this uh, ssh client option so we need to uh, so i'm just uh, uh, using this uh, connection string 
so let's copy this one so we need to open our uh, terminal where uh, we have downloaded our uh, temp file so let me open the terminal so you can see here i have opened uh, uh, windows uh, powershell uh, in uh, in my uh, downloads folder so currently it it is where my pem file is located so here i'm just uh, using that uh, command which is given uh, here so i'm just trying to connect uh, from here okay we want to connect s yes. so now you can see i'm inside uh, the ubuntu uh, ec2 instance uh, you can see the ip address 172 31 13 221 so if we can verify go back and verify there so this is the private ip address which is uh, uh, our uh, ec2 instance okay let's see uh, how we need to uh, connect uh, using putty uh, in ssh client so i'm just uh, opening my uh, application on my system so here you can uh, see i have opened uh, putty uh, ssh client for windows uh, operating system so here it is asking the uh, IP host name ip address so we need to provide uh, the public ip address and inside connection uh, you need to expand the ssh and inside auth if you select this option here you need to provide your uh, private key file for authentication so here you need to uh, provide your uh, ppk file and then uh, after that if you click on open it will be able to connect to your ec2 instance uh, using this uh, uh, application so this is one way uh, and direct so i have directly connected to uh, the ec2 instance uh, from my uh, powershell okay so let's uh, see there is nothing here so present working directory is inside home ubuntu all right now we need to set up uh, github action runner uh, so let's go back to uh, github repository so as we have created our ec2 instance it is uh, ready right so now uh, from our uh, settings uh, we can go to actions you can click on uh, runners option you can see currently there are no uh, github action runners can host our own runners and customize the environment to run jobs in our github actions workflow right so let's create a new self-hosted runner so we need to choose uh, linux here as we are uh, using ubuntu uh, machine okay so we we, need, we can follow these uh, commands and uh, go ahead with the process so I'm just uh, starting with this one. So let's copy this. Okay. So on our uh, uh, home, home directory, current directory. So I'm just uh, pasting this. So let's rename this uh, folders uh, for the backend. Because uh, you can also set up uh, action runners for front end as well that's the reason uh, we are differentiating so let's go with the second command so we need to download the latest runner package okay next step is validating the hash extract the installer let's go for the configuration option create the runner and start the uh, configuration experience okay So it will ask uh, some questions uh, uh, while setting up so here you can see self-hosted runner registration so it is asking name of the runner group to add so we can uh, leave the default options 
so you can see name of the runner i'm also uh, going with the default option so we can press enter to skip okay so now here you can see it is asking name of the work folder uh, it is up to you like you can go with the uh, workspace or uh, uh, underscore work or uh, it's up to you like uh, how you want to uh, define your uh, work folder so i'm just going with the default option pressing enter okay so now inside if you do ls you can see uh, it has a uh, as extracted some uh, files from this uh, zipped file so let's go back here uh, we will uh, execute the remaining commands uh, soon okay let's go back to runners uh, page now okay so here you can see uh, our runner is added here so our ec2 instance uh, uh, is added here and it is currently offline uh, in offline state so let's go back to our server so currently we are inside uh, uh, actions runner so here you can observe there is a file called uh, svc.sh file so we need to uh, execute some commands so that it will uh, install uh, so it is uh, created a sim link so basically what we are doing here is uh, uh, we are running this action runner uh, as a background service so after installing uh, we have to execute uh, the start command so you need to provide a sudo uh, uh, command here okay now you can see uh, the action runner is currently active so let's verify from our browser now okay it is idle okay so now uh, we have uh, set up our action runner on ec2 instance and it is currently on idle state so now uh, let's go ahead and uh, create some uh, github secret variables as we are making use of uh, environment variables so let's go to uh, so in, in the settings you can go to secrets and variables here for actions we need to create uh, one so here you can go ahead and create one new repository secret so here i am providing name uh, as a file name like uh, you can see prod env file so here i am i'm just going to copy paste uh, all the environment variables directly uh, as a value here so in this way uh, like if you have a different uh, environment files so you can simply uh, create uh, uh, secrets and you can make use of them so i will show you where to uh, use these variables in a moment so let's add the secret okay so now we have a uh, env variables available on the github secret so let's go ahead and uh, create our uh, ci cd workflow using github actions so we have to go to actions tab right so here let's go ahead and choose node.js uh, integration okay so under continuous integration uh, i can find uh, node.js one so let's click on configure this one okay so here you can see uh, it is uh, going to create a github folder with the uh, workflows uh, folder inside it so it is going to create a yaml file so let's uh, make some changes uh, so i'm just updating to node.js ci cd so uh, when we want to trigger uh, this uh, uh, workflow so we, we want to trigger when there is a uh, push to the uh, main branch right so whenever you uh, uh, do a commit uh, to the main branch or whenever you merge your uh, feature branch uh, into main branch so i'm not uh, uh, considering this pull request uh, since just we are uh, uh, going with the demo options uh, you can go with your uh, requirements so here uh, build runs on uh, so here uh, we need to update uh, as we are using our own uh, instance so we need to provide self-hosted as a value here so here you you can see uh, we need to mention the node version so i'm going with the latest version um, uh, i mean uh, 18 x so uh, go ahead and uh, uh, use your uh, requirements if if you left with uh, 14 16 and 18 then uh, this job will run on each each versions uh, individually 
so it will create a job for uh, version 14 it will uh, create one for 16 and 18 as well so i'm good with uh, 18 okay so it has a uh, certain steps uh, uh, these are uh, relevant to uh, the github actions so it is using the version that we have mentioned uh, here so you can see uh, it is going to uh, run a clean install command uh, so usually uh, ca means clean install which means uh, it will remove the older uh, node modules folder and it will reinstall the packages from your package.log.json file uh, so i'm good with it that's fine for me um, so I, if you have a build command you can uh, you leave this command as it is uh, and also if you have any uh, if you want to test you can leave this command as well so i do not have any of this so i'm just uh, removing these uh, options okay so here after this uh, uh, command so we need to create dot env file in our local machine right so let's uh, uh, go with some uh, option so let's use this command run command so i'm using pipe uh, symbol here it allows us to uh, run multiple commands so so here we need to first create dot env file so uh, we are using touch command and after this one so we want to pass information to this dot uh, env file so we have a uh, uh, github secrets available right so so we can call uh, github secrets uh, uh, with this uh, format so secrets dot so prod dot env underscore file so this is the uh, variable that i have created in github secrets uh, in the settings so what we are trying to do is we are trying to echo this information into .env file this command will create a .env file it will uh, output the information into this file which uh, inside our project this commands are enough for right now so let's go ahead and commit the changes okay create tamil file commit directly to main branch now if we go to uh, actions you can see uh, it has a uh, triggered uh, uh, workflow right now so let's go inside so you can see it is currently uh, checking out using node.js version 18 it is uh, doing performing clean install creating the dot env file okay everything is completed okay so now uh, the build is successful uh, we can go ahead and verify our uh, ubuntu uh, machine whether we, it has deployed uh, uh, this uh, our project uh, inside that so let's let me so let's uh, verify what is inside uh, okay so we have uh, actions runner we go inside okay you can observe uh, we have a work folder here so we can go inside that inside you can observe uh, we have a node.js rest api ec2 folder so this is uh, same as uh, our github uh, repo name so we need to change the directory inside so again uh, you need to change in one more uh, time so now if you do ls now here you will be able to see uh, your project uh, folders and uh, files uh, you, you can observe there is no dot env file uh, that is because uh, it is hidden right now so let me execute a command that will let me clear this first of all i'm just uh, trying to list all the all the files okay now you can see uh, we have a dot env file so if i do uh, output the information now you can see uh, all the environment variables are uh, added into this uh, env file so now we are good with uh, our uh, project uh, things let's verify uh, so from from the settings if we go to actions and runners okay it is again ideal uh, whenever there is a job going on workflow running 
it will uh, change to active state okay so now uh, we have uh, set up our uh, repository with the uh, uh, actions and the repo is also uh, available uh, inside uh, ec2 instance so now we need to install the node.js and nginx on our uh, machine so that uh, we can uh, run our uh, server so let me go back to our server so let's execute the command sudo update okay all the packages inside the machine updated so we can execute this command uh, so that it will uh, go ahead and uh, fetch the long term uh, supported version okay so now we can go ahead and uh, install node.js all right so installation is completed let's verify the version okay 18 version is installed okay npm is also available so now uh, we need to install uh, nginx so nginx is a popular web server uh, it, it also acts as a, a, a proxy server as well uh, so that's the reason uh, we are making use of that in our ec2 machine we also need to uh, install a pm2 package so pm2 is a uh, process manager for production like it is uh, similar to nodemon in uh, development so we need to uh, make use of this uh, uh, service so that uh, we can run our uh, server express uh, api server uh, as a ba background service so let's install this you need to install is uh, as a sudo command as a root user okay so if you type pm2 okay so it is confirming that it is installed properly you can see production process manager for node.js application with built-in load balance so the next step is we need to config our uh, nginx uh, with proxy information so let's go ahead and do that so i'm i'm trying to change the directory to uh, etc nginx sites available okay if you do ls you can see there is a file called default so we need to open this file and uh, make some changes so i'm just opening it as a sudo otherwise it will not allow you to make uh, right operations so currently if you observe uh, like uh, uh, our nginx is uh, uh, installed on our uh, ec2 instance right uh, so if you go to aws console and take the ip address of this uh, machine if you try to reach uh, reach out to the server now you can see uh, it is giving us the nginx uh, home page so welcome to nginx web server so this so here we we have uh, made a http request so which is uh, uh, coming to default port of uh, nginx right uh, so now here you can see it is uh, listening on port 80 okay this is fine so here if you observe all the uh, slash root uh, uh, request so this is what it is going to serve so that's why uh, when we go to uh, root root of the application like uh, it went to this uh, uh, it tried to render this uh, nginx home page so basically uh, you can read you can use this uh, uh, information uh, to redirect uh, to the front end so here uh, since we are uh, uh, you know um, setting up for our uh, node.js backend api so i have uh, some configuration pre setup i will just go ahead and copy paste so here you can see uh, we are uh, considering whenever we re we receive a request that starts with the slash api what we are trying to do uh, so we are trying to uh, we here we are using a re regex expression where uh, whatever that starts with the slash api and whatever is uh, present after that so this is what it is going to render finally slash api slash and then it will append to this uh, localhost 5000 so this is where our express server is running right so we are proxy passing so we are using nginx and we are using a reverse proxy so that the default request uh, whichever coming to port 80 and uh, if the request goes to slash api slash 
users or something then this request will redirect to port 5000 like uh, 5000 slash api slash users in this way it will interpret and uh, you know pass nginx will pass our request to our express server so here uh, we don't need to name 5000 port this is not uh, needed okay so let me go back and uh, write this uh, into the configuration okay so we have added this information so let's save this so we need to press ctrl x okay it is asking to save yes and press enter all right so the information has been uh, added so we need to restart the nginx whenever we make any changes uh, on uh, nginx configuration so we need to uh, restart so system ctl restart nginx uh, this is fine so the next step is uh, uh, so we have we haven't uh, started our express server right you know, like uh, right now if you try to uh, reach out to this endpoint api slash users you can see it is saying uh, bad gateway this is because uh, we haven't started our uh, express server so since we have uh, installed a, a pm2 package uh, so we can make use of that okay we need to change the directory to our project uh, where server.js file is existed so we need to change the directory so i'm just copying this path okay if you do ls here we have server.js file uh, so here we can able to execute this command pm2 so we need to start server.js uh, file right so we can also provide name to this uh, process so i'm providing it as a backend api so let's enter okay now you can see the backend api is up and running so it is online okay so now if we go back and try to refresh the page hooray so finally we are able to uh, you know uh, start our uh, express server on ec2 instance and we are able to fetch this information from mongodb database whenever we make changes to our uh, github uh, you know uh, so we need to uh, again restart the server right so currently we are running this uh, uh, server.js using this pm2 as a background service but whenever we make any changes to our github repository to our code base so it needs to automatically restart uh, based on the latest uh, code base so we need to go to uh, our workflow again so to this node.js ml file so, so we need to edit this file so we need to add a new command here one more command uh, here so we have uh, uh, created up our server with the name right uh, so pm2 restart backend api so while starting our express server like we have given a name of this uh, API process so backend api so next time onwards we we can make use of that so pm2 restart backend api so what this process is doing is whenever we make a push to our main branch with the code changes so it will trigger the build on our uh, self-hosted ec2 machine on the version that we have mentioned so it is going to uh, reinstall the modules it is going to create an environment file with uh, all the latest uh, uh, environment variables and it is going to start our uh, backend api server so let's commit the changes now So again uh, since we have uh, uh, you know made a uh, push again you, you can observe there will be one more uh, workflow trigger as you can see with this commit okay so let me simulate uh, uh, a new feature uh, request so let's go ahead and update our uh, so we have made many commits on our uh, uh, github right so first of all we need to pull so so we are currently inside so on our main branch so let me do a pull as you can see we have uh, some changes 
okay so now uh, i will go ahead and add a new route to this so you can do this change in any feature branch but i'm directly go uh, doing on the main branch let's say we have uh, a route for products so i'm i'm not going to uh, create a route file and all just trying to provide the uh, request handler directly here itself so request response so i'm going to return json response uh, with the status of 200 okay let's save this change so now we have made a change uh, we have to add staging and commit so i'm pushing uh, to the remote repository so now uh, based on this uh, uh, commit uh, so we have to see one more uh, workflow that should trigger yes you can see it is uh, triggering this so all this is happening automatically based on our workflow setup so github actions runner is listening to all this uh, uh, workflow runs and uh, uh, during this process it will deploy all our code base into our ec2 machine and we are making use of nginx for uh, uh, web server as well as uh, reverse proxy and we are running our express server using pm2 process manager package okay let me go ahead and uh, refresh this one okay it is running so we have uh, created a route for products right let's go ahead and type this there you go uh, you can see this is the response all right uh, so this is the video guys uh, thank you for watching i hope uh, you learned something from this video and uh, you know uh, gain knowledge on uh, setting up automatic deployment for uh, uh, rest api node rest api on aws ec2 instance I will provide this uh, uh, in a GitHub repository. Feel free to uh, clone and go ahead and practice this uh, for your uh, use cases. Thank you for watching. Uh, I will see you in another video. Until then, take care. Bye.